Welcome back to the floor of the CME Group here in Chicago, January 12th, Wednesday. I'm Killer from Treasury Curve. Treasury Curve is an institutional money market portal. We assist firms in their overnight cash management. Let's get into the zone, the CMZ zone today. A lot of moving parts. You know, the media is reporting that the Portugal bond auction went extremely well. I don't view it exactly the same way, but nonetheless, it has put wind in the sales and the equities here domestically are rallying and they are up, up and away. Uh, you know, that Portuguese auction that went off today. 1.6 billion they auctioned off on the higher end of the range that they were anticipating. Uh, went off at a yield of 6.72%. So a lot of energy, a lot of excitement, oh, basically over 28 basis points. I don't see it. Nonetheless, you have to go with it. You can't fight this. This market continues to move north. Uh, Spain tomorrow, Italy on Friday. You know, it feels like that Viking prescription I alluded to yesterday. It's been extended over there. So we'll see how it all works out over there. Um, you know, the inflation. Inflation is causing some unrest. We're seeing it pop up in India. We're seeing it pop up all over the world. Inflation from food, from the commodities to retailers. We're going to see how it all affects here. But a lot of inflation concerns. You know, the Eurozone's been heating up. Inflation's always been on the back burner, but it's coming a little more central now. We'll see how this public unrest situates itself. Uh, you know, Thursday, we got PPI, Friday, CPI. Some pertinent data to come out in this market. We're really looking towards those numbers to kind of see if we continue to move up or there's a possible little pullback. I don't know if a pullback's in store, but it would be healthy for the markets here. We're up seven weeks in a row. Unbelievable. I think the NASDAQ is now knocking on 40% up since uh, December 1st. You know, I kind of uh, like to talk about this market right now and the way it kind of just lasts up time and time. For all those gearheads out there, if you're a car guy or a race car fan, if you're familiar with nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide shoots that burst of energy and gives that engine that extra horsepower and really revs it up. Well, I think that's what's going on right now. we got some nitrous oxide. But the one downside of nitrous oxide here is if that engine is not sound, if that engine is not secure in every possible part, there's potential for breakdown. So are we seeing a, the last little shot of nitrous here in an engine that maybe is not hitting on all cylinders? Time will only tell. Uh, let's drill down a little bit on the treasuries. You know, we had a pretty decent auction yesterday, that three-year auction. They hit it pretty hard prior to that, but they came back and bought it all the way across the curve. You know, I think today a 10-year auction, we'll see how it all works out. But that 30-year pivot's coming at 120.25. The 10-year's coming at 120.07 and a half. That 200-day, I like to look at the 200 days in a couple different markets. You know, that 10-year 200-day is coming in at 120.07 and a half. The 30-year, I really want to see if it comes down to that level to have 119.27. That was a great number uh, prior to the unemployment number. It took off from there, rallied to 120.24, came back on that last Friday, came back to 119.27, and then took off again from there. So let's see if we test that level. Maybe that'd be a good pivot to play today. Uh, in the S&P, another new high. You know, I, I'm sounding like a broken record up here, but another new high. You know, 83, 1283, sensational, you know, pop up here. It really kind of feels like the HFTs are really in the market, hunting for those stops, trying to make newer highs. We'll see if we get a price rejection. We have not. You know, on the NASDAQ, we haven't had a price rejection. We have six new contract highs consecutively. We have not seen a price rejection. Maybe we do today. Hopeful, but doubtful. Nonetheless, uh, the killer pivot, same pivot I've been looking at, that 1266.50. Nothing really happens to the bulls, you know, state of mind until we're under 1255. And I hate to reiterate that, but 1255 is a key level. Uh, resistance above, I think this 8450 is a good resistance level. And I think a mental resistance is the buck, you know, 1300. I think it's a good mental resistance. The euro currency, you know, up overnight due to the Portugal situation. You know, that 200 days coming in at 130. 87. I like that we've closed underneath that, but let's see if we test that 200 day. We rock back above it, it'll be interesting. But the only thing about the whole Portugal situation that I find a little bit uh, skeptical is that the currency is still down four cents from last week. The equities, new highs here domestically. Who's right? Who's, who's playing this from the right side? You know, we'll see how the whole Spain and Italy thing goes out. But you know, I think this week we have one, one more, uh, two more auctions, so we'll see how it goes. And the killer from the floor, I don't have to say it, do I? Remember.